Welcome to Tanashi's Movie News. Yeah, it's Tanashi's Movie News. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing these voices. Don't don't ask. It's late. Okay, it's really late. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the box office recap. So, for the last week, uh, Zootopia came in number one again with $50 million. Yeah, damn right it did. <laughs> and number two came 10 Cloverfield Lane with $25.2 million. Yeah, damn right it did again. Coming in at number three. Yeah, you're right. It's Deadpool. $10.8 million. Woo, you thought I paused because I forgot. I didn't forget. But you're damn right it came in at number three. Coming in at number four was London Has Fallen with $10.6 million. Yo, damn right. And coming in at number... F- oh, okay, well, I was wrong. Coming in at number five was Whiskey, Tango, Fox, Trotten, Tootin, Hollerin, Son of a Gun movie. I don't, I don't know. Really long title, $4.6 million. So, noticeably, there is a movie missing from the top five that I thought was going to be in the top five. Look at that little thing down in the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, use a turd. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, really cool to see that Zootopia didn't even drop 50%. Fantastic. Love that movie, as I said before. Deadpool still sticking around. Amazing. Tin Cloverfield Lane doing decent. Uh, I don't know how big of a budget they had, but... Second's pretty decent. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Tootin. I. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's got 4.6, so it stayed in there. Uh, and London Has Fallen it did okay. But really, Zootopia. I mean, good for you, Zootopia. Good for you. I, I mean, it's cool. You're. It's a good movie. Did I already pre order it? Yeah. I did. Did I already pre-order Deadpool? Yeah, I did. Did I pre-order any of the other movies? No. But Zootopia, you deserve this fame. You take it from Frozen. In fact, you shove it in Frozen's face. You do it. You do it real hard. Wait, what? No. No, 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 no. Whoa, I didn't mean that. Hold on. Get your mind out of the gutter. Didn't mean anything like that. Jesus. Nah. Wow, let it go. Oh no. Oh. Oh, oh we got to move on. Not not we can't have these puns going. What is this nonsense? Okay, we have two movies coming out this week. The Divergent series Allegiant Part 1. Uh, uh whatever. And Miracles from Heaven, which is far more interesting of the two, at least in my opinion. So how am I going to match this up? Mm. Okay, it comes down to whether or not I think the Divergent movie is going to be higher than Zootopia. Because Zootopia, I feel, is going to be really up there. And I'm going to say no. No, no, no. I'm going to keep Zootopia at number one. Probably a mistake, but I don't care. Zootopia is going to be number one. Number two, we'll go with Allegiant. I feel like, what is it, Insurgent, Allegiant, Divergent, Detergent? I don't know. There's so many different titles. I don't care about any of them. But anyway, Allegiant will be number two. So that puts number three. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to say number three will be 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, I guess I'll put it at number three. I think I'll number four. I'm gonna say it'll be Deadpool. I again, I'm keeping it higher than the fifth spot. I know, but I still think it's gonna carry. Like it's gonna keep going. Uh, but that leaves number five with Miracles from Heaven. I don't know. I just don't get the feeling this movie. It's and again, the one I'm looking forward to more so. I just don't know. I mean, it's got an interesting message, and it's coming up on Easter, which, hmm, that's like the holy day. (laughs) 
But I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to put it at number five. I just don't know how many people are looking forward to it or not. So I'm going to stick to that. Hopefully I get all five right. By golly, it will it will happen again. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it happens. I'll force it. to. I will buy so many tickets. I won't do that. It says that, that would be a mistake. Okay. Well, in any case, that's my thoughts on it. What are your thoughts? Go ahead and let me know. Comment down there. Let me know how wrong am I. You let me know. You you go you do that. You let me know. You tell me you you be like Tanashi. You're a, you're a, a wimp. You're a coward. And no, okay. Well, don't get personal. But be like you don't know what you're talking about. This is how it is. And give me that list. And we'll see who's right. I'll bet a I won't bet any money cuz I'm poor. But if I had money, I'd bet a dollar that I'm I'm fairly accurate. That doesn't showcase a lot of faith in myself right there, but yeah. Anywho, let's go ahead and get on to the news brief segment. Yes, a lot of trailers, what have you. Let's get right into it. Okay, so most of this will be uh, trailer reviews, and I'll, I'll put the links down uh, as far as the actual trailer so you can watch along. But I thought I'd get into some other news, and in case you didn't know, Lucasfilm and Disney did announce that Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford Ford are officially re- reuniting to bring Indiana Jones 5 uh, to theaters. So we are getting into Indiana Jones 5. Now the other thing is there's now a screenwriter involved. And the screenwriter is David Kuip, uh from The Hollywood Reporter. They, they said that he has been tapped to bring the new Anna jo- Indiana Jones film to screen. Uh, he wrote on Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, War of the Worlds, and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So, yeah. again, Jurassic Park, absolutely love that film. Lost World, not as much. War of the Worlds is weird. <laughs> Crystal Skull, not a big fan of it. But... That being said, I think a lot of people liked Lost World. I think a lot of people probably liked War of the Worlds. So he's definitely got some uh, credentials to to back up this move. And he's obviously worked with Spielberg plenty of times in the past. So at least there's that. I mean, I don't know. That's pretty interesting to to me. I I think... uh, I'm I'm gonna be a little I'm a little skeptical of how it could turn out, but you never know. So just saying. Also, um, from the Hollywood Reporter, there's three people who are pinned up, and this goes with Han Han Solo, but may actually apply to Indiana Jones as well. Three people are up for the role of Han Solo. They're on a short list. Uh, And the film, which is going to be directed by uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, right? But uh, we we seem to have three that are are really at the forefront. And it's Alden and Ellen Rick I have no idea how to say his last name. Sorry. From Hail Caesar. He was in Hail Caesar. He, From what I've heard, he stole uh, that that movie from everybody. He's the, like the good redeeming part of that movie. Then you have Jack Rayner from Age of Extinction, Transformers. Not a good movie, but I don't think anything was good in that movie. So, who, yeah, I don't know. And then Taron uh, Egerton from Kingsman, The Secret Service and Eddie the Eagle. So he's definitely the guy I I would look forward to the most. He's the one I know the most about in terms of being Han Solo. 
But of course, the thing here too is, even though they're like I just said, they're doing an Indiana Jones five, what have you. There's a chance that whoever wins the the role of Han Solo could carry over and play Indiana Jones. They're both owned by Disney. Obviously, Harrison Ford did both characters, so there's that, and they've got some similar traits between the two two of them. So, uh, yeah, not saying it's a definite, but there is a chance that that's how it's going to work out. Personally, I'd like to see Taron. I think he did a great job as far as Kingsman goes. I haven't seen Eddie the Eagle, so I can't really speak on that. I can just speak on the trailers, in which I thought he did fine in the trailers. That doesn't really embody you know, Harrison Ford, so I can't say that would have sold me one way or the other on whether he would work or not. But I think just from Kingsman alone, and at least from the potential he showed in Eddie the Eagle... He proves he has the acting capability. So, of them, I I would probably go with him. But, that being said, that's three at the top. That doesn't mean there's not others involved. We could get someone completely out of left field. So, you got to take all this news with a bit of a grain of sand. The only thing, really, to take from this, I guess, is that there is another Indiana Jones movie. And that one of these guys could end up there as well as being in the Han Solo movie. With the uh, movie less than a week away now, man, do I want to see this movie. Like, I'm going to try so much to see it either that Friday or the night of. Don't know if it'll happen, but God willing, <laughs> I'll see this damn movie. The thing is, there's been a lot of talk on the R-rated cut of the movie we I gave you the time as far as how long the theatrical version is we find out that the director's cut that'll be coming out uh, the R-rated cut of the film is going to be 30 minutes longer so and and this is all with uh, talking with the Hollywood reporter but Snyder said this he said uh, the DVD version who says that it's, I mean DVD, Blu-ray. <laughs> it's a half hour longer, and some of that additional material is some of the stuff that we took out for the rating, PG-13 rating. I was like, cool, I can put it back in for the director's cut. There is nothing. There was nothing by design. This was the material I just put back in, and then when the MPAA looked at it again, they were like, oh, now the movie is rated R. And by the way, it's not a hard R. There's no nudity. There's a little bit of violence. It just tips the scale. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't think there would be... Uh, that would be interesting to have nudity, I guess, in a DC film. I don't know. It just never occurred to me that that would be a thing. But another 30 minutes. So you're talking, like, about three hours, a little over, slightly over three hours, Oh, goodness. Like, hopefully this film is good. I think it will be. I think it will be amazing. Hopefully it's as good as I'm thinking. Because to have such a great film and then get a extended version of that with 30 minutes, that's... I love that. 30, mil, 30 minutes makes so much more sense than... Tapping on two minutes of additional footage and then calling it extended. I hate when things do that. And the whole thing about it being rated R, I'm just pointing this out. Zack Snyder does a lot of rated R uh, movies. Like, even Sucker Punch, which was PG-13, had an, an extended version, which was rated R, came out with the movie. I was just saying, he tends to do radar. He feels like it fits him better to do radar. So, I just think it's all very interesting. Um, and I'm I'm definitely looking forward to both. I I want I want this I want this in my life. I do. <laughs> Not too much longer, and I will see this movie.
Oh, I will see it, damn it. In any case, I <laughs> gotta settle down from that. Um, yeah, so does anybody know what Lobo is? No? Uh, if you don't, he's a very crass, violent, alien bounder hunter. Um, and he's getting his own movie, <laughs> which is going to be directed by Brad Payton the man behind San Andreas. So, yeah, um, the Hollywood Reporter reported that Warner Brothers, who are set to distribute the film and have been developing the project, announced that Jason Fuse will be writing the script for the film. For those of y'all wondering, uh, he's also the writer for Wonder Woman, and... Uh, he penned the upcoming DC title and will appear in Damien Chazelle's hugely anticipated follow-up to Whiplash, La La Land, later this year, he, and among other things. So the basic point is he's writing Wonder Woman, and Warner th thought it was a good idea to move him over and have him also do Lobo, which is interesting. Lobo's an interesting, uh, just to begin with, he's an interesting character to really have a movie about. Like, I mean, he can do his own thing, I guess. There's there's nothing stopping him. I think he appeared in, and I may be wrong, but I think he appeared in an episode or two of the Superman animated series in the 90s I think there are some form of him appeared in that so yeah, he's, he can be put in this realm but he has his own standalone thing like Suicide Squad is kind of doing but they have a little more linking back to Batman in, in that world whereas unless you involve Lobo with Superman he has no real history with any of the characters, at least none that would provide him a, a reason to have his own movie. But it, I mean, it's an interesting thing altogether. Like, and to have such faith in this guy, you don't even have the movie done. Wonder Woman's not even done yet. You don't have any critical reaction to it whatsoever. And you're already telling this guy, hey, we like what you did. Go ahead and write. This other obscure character and put him in the film. Like to have that much confidence in somebody, I gotta say, like, I, cool. <laughs> I, I mean, that, it gives me a little, little faith that they're actually, that he's doing a good job because you're moving forward so quickly with this. And again, character aside, you're bringing him from one project to which you don't know the results of and putting him on another one. That shows a lot of faith. <laughs> so, more power to this guy. He's obviously able to convince him. And I'm very curious now how all these movies are going to turn out. So, I mean, whiplash, but I'm very curious how the DC movies are going to turn out as a result of him writing these. One of my most anticipated movies to come out this year, which did not actually make uh, the list that I did about anticipated movies, because that was actually movies that are in theaters. This one's not in theaters. Although I would instantly pay, and I don't normally pay to see the movies, but I would instantly pay uh, to go see this, is The Killing Joke. And, you know, finding out that Mark Hamill is reprising his role as the Joker finding out that Kevin Conroy is reprising his role as Batman is just blows my mind because I'm such a big fan of the 90's animated series and there's they still hold up I, they, you know they have issues of course everything does but they absolutely hold up and as, though many people view Mark Hamill as Luke, and again, I got a, like, when I saw that, 
you know, Star Wars. I grew up on Star Wars. So I get that. I get that notion. And honestly, I didn't know that Mark Hamill at first was the voice of the Joker. It took me a while before I found that out and, you know, connected the dots because even knowing his name didn't really help me. I knew Luke as Luke and Joker as Joker, but he is the Joker. And I love different interpretations of the Joker everything else but there's nothing that will really contest with his version of the Joker and there's nothing that can really you know contest with uh, Kevin Conroy voicing Batman is for me they are they are the ideal interpretations of these characters so finding all that out was great and then Mark Hamill gave us this image that you see and a quote I'll see if y'all recognize this all it takes is one bad day to reduce the sanest man alive to lunacy just one bad day remember there's always madness madness is the emergency exit if I have to have a past then I prefer it to be multiple choice brilliant quote (laughs) <laughs> so I obviously I own the comic um, I have it actually a hardback copy of it I believe I have a few copies for that matter but I, I think I have a hardback copy is, is my favorite one of it but there's been you know rumors about there being an R rating They they got approval to do an R rating whether they will or not I don't know but they got approval to do it. And animated movies, especially if you've been keeping up with the DC anime movies, they, they've they had a lot of ups and downs recently. A few more missteps, in my opinion. But the standalone films outside of the Justice League tend to be really good for me. So, And there's a lot of good Batman films. This is such a great story. If you need an R rating, go for it. <laughs> it's, it's just it's my opinion on it. But you know this this thing has me. I mean, this has me really hyped up. I really want to see this. Also, you have Tara Strong uh, voicing Barbara Gordon, and Ray Wise, who will be Commissioner Gordon, who will be in in the movies. They're very essential to the movies, in case you didn't know. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of what The Killing Joke is about. You know, I don't want to ruin any more of it, but there's a lot that happens in it. And it's one of those movies, like The Dark Knight, I would put it up there with The Dark Knight Returns, as far as how good of a Batman movie it is. And just from this animated clip alone, this little this little snippet, and because of everything that I know so far, couldn't look forward to this movie any more than I already already do. Definitely gonna check this movie out. Have to, absolutely have to. There's, I mean, <laughs> I would recommend if nothing, no other animated movie. You check this out because if it's done, if it's done right, and it may not be, but if it's done right, the story is such a brilliant piece of work that it'll it'll probably instantly soar up, uh, and that's uh, from among my top favorite animated movies, and that's saying something. Okay, I'll be honest, I have no idea what Ben Hur is. But it has Morgan Freeman in it. So we're going to check it out. Oh, by the way, I'm going to put the links down or try to put the links down for all the trailers that I'm going to be uh, reviewing or or what have you. Uh, Just sharing my comments with you guys while I'm watching. So I'm going to try not to have any pauses or anything like that. But if you want to watch the trailer and hear what I'm saying links are down below so you can pull up in another window or what have you all right let's go ahead and start this been her i think i've heard of that before paramount 
Okay. <laughs> Does the guy on front? Jeez, that would suck. Kind of like this right here. What is happening? How long were you a slave? Five years. What is your name? Oh God, <laughs> Margaret Freeman with hair. Boy, that is weird. I think I recognize that guy. I'm not sure from what. Prince of Egypt, maybe? I don't know. You know, it, it's always got to be a family member. I don't know why. I'm just saying. Morgan Freeman is tripping me out. Like, that hair. That's so weird. Weird. Okay. We've seen going. Well, no, huh? No kidding. <laughs> Who would have thought? If you lose, you die. Never heard of that before. Yeah. Should have stayed away. You should have killed me. I will. So like it's like Mario Kart, right? On the horses? Remember? No? It's kinda, it's kinda like Mario Kart. Lot of action. Of course you get that romance scene like you usually get in trailers. Uh, yeah, those, that, I mean, that that would scare me with the horses, for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know that I'm looking any more forward to it than, than just knowing a name before. I mean, it's got some actions taking place in Rome or what have you. Like, that's all fine and dandy, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this movie yet. <sighs> Seriously, though, Morgan Freeman. Who on earth? Like, who thought it was a good idea <laughs> to give him hair in the movie? I don't know. It just looks weird. But, yeah... All right, you guys will have to let let me know if you uh, if you're more interested in this than I am, because I mean I'm I'm not it doesn't really affect me one way or another. Like I didn't care enough. There wasn't enough there. It was a story where I'm like, okay, I've seen this kind of story story beats in so many other movies, and it, this just didn't bring any new aspects to it for me. But I don't know. Maybe it'll be uh, better than I'm thinking. I was not expecting this kind of a uh, trailer like this at all. But uh, yeah, let's watch <laughs> Sausage Party. Okay? Yeah, let's do it. Weird character designs for the people. It, not a big fan of that. This is going to go downhill. You already know. <laughs> you already know it's going to go downhill. Oh, yeah. Seth Rogen. Okay, the glamour buns. Just, just saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the way they look. <laughs> I like that. I'm the first to enter but eternity. <laughs> I 
Um, <laughs> baby carrots. <laughs> Funny song. A lot of cursing so far. <laughs> Of course, of course. Even animated, Seth Rogen is smoking some shit. Don't miss the Oreo. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of people in this movie. Um, yeah, I I don't even know. I don't even know. What? <laughs> what a weird concept. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of a lot of fun, funny stuff there. <laughs> a lot a lot of cursing. Definitely some interesting designs for the for the food or what have you. I, a war aspect like I don't know Seth Rogen as an, as a wiener I guess his voice works well as a wiener like I I approve never thought I'd say that but I do I approve it you heard it here right here I approve of Seth Rogen as a as a wiener okay just take that as you will <laughs> Anyway, I, I really don't know what else to say. Like, that was that was entertaining. Surprisingly, this is not the type of animated movie I watch. I watch anime, okay, Japanese animation. For those of y'all that don't know, I watch Pixar and DreamWorks and Disney and all kinds of movies. But was not expecting that. And the cast alone, jeez, wow. All right, next one. Another trailer. Wah! <laughs> the Shallow, starring Blake Lively. Hmm. Something tells me this is about a shark. Or a croc. Probably a shark. I would think a shark. I'm like 98% sure. Oh, from the water perspective. Reminds me of Jaws. Oh, that's interesting. Hearing the screaming underwater first was very interesting. That... Mm-hmm. Okay, of course she's bleeding. Gotta be. That's some dangerous coral reef going on. And that, there's a shark. Alright, not too much there. Um, okay, I like the setting. I'm not sure where it is, but I do like the setting. I like, I actually like this trailer for a teaser, not an official trailer, but for a, uh, a teaser, it, it seems fine. Here's the thing, though. Uh, it's really hard to have a film solely built upon one person, one character, because everything, like the weight of the entire film being on one actor or actress, very hard for them to pull it off. Doesn't mean it can't be done. 
If you want an example of it being done, check out Ryan Reynolds in the film Buried. Very good film uh, with him in it. And, and he, you know, it's it's in a confined area pretty much the entire movie. So it's just based off his performance. So it can happen. But this reminds me of Open Water, I think is the name of it. Now that was with two characters and a few few minor characters at the beginning. But that entire movie was far too long and just couldn't maintain attention your attention with everything and there was numerous sharks in there too so again this is a very brief trailer apparently a movie is coming out June 24th I'm sure we'll see more from it but I just I don't know I, I don't see it it has an interesting concept Sure, but I'm just not totally buying how the execution could make the movie work more than just like a brief episode or something like that. You know, something really condensed down. I just don't know how the entire movie could be built around this and be done well. But who knows? Maybe it can be. I mean, it's definitely got some good shots for it. I don't mind Blake Lively uh, as far as acting is concerned. She's done some good roles. Um, here or there so there's definitely that working I guess kind of favorably for it but we'll see how it works time for the legend of Tarzan alright play Warner Brothers hmm big mountains lots of mist that's right mm -hmm. treehouse Kind of interesting to see that live action. What is happening here? This is his dad. What? So the apes killed Tarzan's dad. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. And she has a kid. Interesting. That is a big ass gorilla. For okay, the guy I don't know who this is. The guy that is playing Tarzan, he definitely looks the part. And director from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. You see him rubbing up against a lion? Like, I don't know. That's a little much. I mean, I'd come for her. Take that as you will. <laughs> oh. Damn. Okay. Why is... Really? That's a lot of wildebeest. Dormant th uh I don't know. That that was a really weird scene. Like they were wrecking stuff up. Husband. Huh. Uh, a little awkward CG there with the gorillas. And that was was that a hippo? Oh man, there was there's quite a bit going on here. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe a little too much. I don't... I don't know. I mean... One of my... Okay. One of my minor complaints about the animated series... Movie. Series. Whew, my, one complaint. Oh, man. <laughs> one complaint about the animated movie which y'all should know I really like is that there's too too, too much that they're trying to tell because they're trying to tell his story as a kid and everything and then you have the uh, the leopard I believe which was responsible for his parents death and everything you have all that happen and then you have the after that with uh, Clayton and Jane and 
you know, all, all of the stuff that occurs with that and the gorillas about being captured and everything. And this takes it another step. This incorporates even more. They could do it well. So, uh, you know, I don't want to say they can't. But I feel like they're trying to do too much. I'm sure the CG will be improved. That won't change how ridiculous that scene is. That scene was ridiculous. I mean, those wildebeests must be some real badasses. Like, I thought I saw one bursting through, you know, a wall or something. I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure I, I saw them all running around, and I saw one burst through their wall and go, Oh, yeah! But that could be another show entirely. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, fact of the matter is, there's some interesting stuff here. I feel like there may be a little too much. Some action scenes that look kind of cool. Some action scenes that don't really work. Definitely like the look of the guy playing Tarzan. Haven't heard much from him yet, but definitely like his look. And I like Margot Robbie, so... Yeah. And I like the director, like, at least from, you know, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. I, I like him. I like what he did with that. So who knows? Who knows? Still looking forward to it. Definitely going to check it out. I just have my reservations about it. Okay, I'm really getting hyped for this movie. Been wanting to see this movie. Let's check out X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, or rather, I'll check it out. <laughs> you just listen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure y'all have seen it. Let's see if it'll load. I'm doing commercials. Ah, I've heard that before. Well, this was in the last movie, I think. <laughs> yeah, he is. Right. Brian Singer being backed. Oscar Isaacs. Looking forward to the team. Looking forward to him. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, nice, nice little action scene there. Yeah, he does. It's only a little built into his name. Missile's going. I have no idea what that's about. See, I, I mean, I get it. Ah, oh, see, I paused. <laughs> I get it. Jennifer Lawrence, really popular, obviously. A lot of movies her face kind of markets it is marketable um but it's mystique man like stop stop with that against a god okay so let's go to war pause his <laughs> it showed the scene from the last one we have a uh, apocalypse stopping professor xavier but his eyes are glowing. He gets all big and he throws him. That's interesting. I really feel like this is and that, like this is a mind battle. I don't know why. Well, only because it looks like Professor Xavier's like he's standing. He's not. He's not like in a wheelchair or something, which is where he would he ended up in the last movie, right? Because uh, he stopped taking the drug. So I I tend to think this might be a mind battle that's going in. He's just losing, which would explain uh, Mystique taking a more leadership role. Forget everything you think you know. And you don't see Professor X. Okay, Night. Hold on, Nightcrawler versus Angel. Uh, definitely an interesting fight there. And then Psylocke versus Beast. I would think Psylocke would just win. She's a telekinetic as well as a badass. I don't know. But very cool. A lot of fight scenes going on. 
and you're starting to hear the speech going for Mystique, so. Oh, finally. Yeah. Always gotta have a speech, don't you? Very nice dialogue scene. I liked it just as much this time as last time. Yeah. Oh, Havoc. Or Havoc. I don't know what. Havoc? Mystique is like. <laughs> non sexually now. Okay. Oh, did you, I did not just go there. Yes, we know it will fall. Got it. <laughs> May 27th. I, I mean, what can I say? Really looking forward to this movie. It's a third in a series that's been really good. That makes some people worry. Understandably so. It's not too many good movies that are the third in a series. Not too many. So, especially because... But here's my thing. Brian Singer did the first X-Men, which was good. His X2, which was great. He did Days of Future Past, which was awesome. He's never done a bad X-Men movie. So, and because of the cast and everything involved with this, you know, trailer and seeing Apocalypse and Nightcrawl. Didn't see Jubilee. I think Jubilee might be just a cameo, which would suck because I really want to see Jubilee. But I've not seen her except for one brief scene in any of these trailers. So, I don't know. And I, I think Professor Xavier, let me know what you think. I, I think he might get taken out. And that's why, not killed, but taken out of the game, so to speak. And that's why uh, Mystic has to step in and be the leader again. That and it's because it, she's Jennifer Lawrence. But, you know. It is what it is. And I, I haven't seen Wolverine, so I don't know if he's going to be in this movie or not. Still looking out for that. But, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Really cool. A lot of really cool stuff. Uh, going nice action scenes. Some character battles that we didn't get to see before. Uh, nice to see Havoc using his powers. Nightcrawler, you know, the fight. Very interesting all around. And I uh, can't wait for this movie. Okay, this has been pretty lengthy, so I'm just going to wrap this up real quick. The spotlight that I am uh, putting on is Game of Thrones. Oh, man, Game of Thrones. Look, I love Game of Thrones. And you have season five, which I did see. Ha! I'm recommending something I've actually seen. What? No way. Mind blown. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I've seen this season. I like this season. I know some people have a bit of issues with it. I think that's more of their knowledge of the writing process. The behind-the-scenes stuff, basically, is I think is more the issue that they have with this than why they, you know, why they don't have issues with other seasons. I personally, I really like this season. I think it worked well. There's a lot of good episodes in it, especially the end. You know, they do what they do. <laughs> I always leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger with stuff going down. Things are really starting to move. You've got some characters that weren't focused on at all this season. That will be addressed in this coming one. So that doesn't worry me in any way. It's just Game of Thrones is by and far my favorite television show. It's so good that it makes me forget sometimes that it is a TV show. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. This isn't a movie. It feels like just a really long movie. but Or set of movies, but it's not. It is a TV show, but the way they build the characters... You know, the sets are nice, obviously. The uh, the CG is really solid, especially given, you know, the budget restraints they have being on television. But the characters and the acting and the way the plot plays out and the fact that you have so many characters that you hate and then you come to like or you like and then you go to hate and you got, 
you know, you never know which character is going to live or die and everything. This this movie's just I see I <laughs> I said it. I didn't plan it that way. But this uh series is just absolutely brilliant. I don't know how much longer it's going to go. I feel like they're going to wrap up before too long. Maybe at season 10, 10 seasons probably a pretty good estimation, but if so, I'm probably going to, like, I, I feel like I'm going to enjoy the road, uh, the entire road there, because I just can't think of any show that has kept my attention, that's, you know, and immersed me into the story, and had me go through, like, all these different, had all these different strong, complex character moments like this movie does. And that's not counting the action. It's not counting the romance of it or the nudity in some cases for some of y'all. Yeah, I don't know what some of y'all are looking for. <laughs> anyway, it's not counting that. It's not counting the dragons and I love dragons. Or I don't want to give away too much, but it's just there's so much to this series that you should definitely buy it and the case looks fantastic. Now I've only ever bought one collector's edition, sad to say. I, I got the first one. I'm sorry. I I don't I spend my money on things I shouldn't spend my money on. You know, hookers, aliens, the works. Uh <laughs> no. I, I I spend my money on figures or movies or mostly bills a lot of bills but this is definitely a series that I have to at least buy I may not get the collector's edition every time but I have to at least buy the regular version of it because it is such a good show I can't recommend this higher anyway that being said this is over it's done <whistles> wrap a bow on it you know set it under the tree well no don't set it under the tree wouldn't open it for months anyway hopefully you enjoyed this movie news if you did click that like button share subscribe to my channel comment I, i'm always looking forward to reading the comments sharing your thoughts on some of the news or maybe some stuff i didn't cover that you want to hear about because this again this was a lot of trailers and there's a lot there's still a lot of stuff happening right now uh as far as and you know stuff happening in my life there's a lot of stuff going on but yeah if you want to to talk about anything please feel free go ahead and, and leave a comment uh, that being said until next time peace <laughs>